Hey guys, so it is day two of Piper's five day camp and we have been working on the downstay and refreshing some things uh, from yesterday that I will videotape later, but I wanted to show you a new thing that we're gonna start working on. It is the leave it command. It is very easy to teach this command and I wanted you to see the initial steps because it's something you can easily do at home. So the idea behind leave it is that it has two real purposes. One is to say, leave it, don't touch that, or don't think about doing that. Don't jump on that person, don't pick up that thing, uh, don't bark at that. Any unwanted behavior that you think might be uh, impending, you say, leave it, to mean don't even think about it, right? So it is. Um, it can be used as a preventative in that way, don't even think about it. But if the unwanted behavior has already started, the jumping is already happening or the barking's already happening or whatever, you can say leave it as an interrupter. In other words, stop doing that. So it can be used as don't even think about it or stop doing it. Okay, I'm gonna go out of camera here so I can show you this. So what you're gonna see me doing, I'll just be sitting in a chair and I have one very high value, tasty, delicious, this is actually a, a beef lung uh, and you could use anything. You could use um, a bully stick. This happens to be crunchy, so she can nibble bits off of it during this exercise, that's fine. If it's something hard like a bully stick, that is also fine, it doesn't matter. But what you're gonna see me doing, I'm gonna be holding this in the left hand. The important thing about the target treat is that it is big enough for you to grip, really hang on to no matter what Piper does and that it's really high value, that it really, really holds her interest. You wanna be able to grip it because what you're gonna see in a minute is that I let her get all up on it, licking, nibbling, sniffing. If she stands up on me, this is not a time that I correct that. I let that happen. I am going to be repeating at just a, a, a firm but casual way. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Of course, at this point, she does not know what that phrase means. But I'm going to keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. At some point, she's going to come off this tasty treat. I will have behind my back, so as not to be a distractor, little uh, treat, uh, training treats, the, the um, what do you call them, the zooks. Little bitty ones. They're not as good as this, but they're still, they're a reward. I have them behind my back because I don't want them to distract her. So she's going to town trying to get this thing. And I am just repeating, leave it, leave it, leave it. At some point, as I was saying, she's gonna move away. Whether it's because she's not sure what it is I want or she hears something and she's distracted or I, have, I do not care why. But the second that she slightly pulls back from this, I go, yes, and I bring a treat around, I give her a reward and then it goes back. So what I'm doing is conditioning the brain. She keeps hearing leave it and then when she moves away, she gets rewarded. Let me show you, so easy. Come here, baby. So first, I'm gonna, this is the my left hand. Right hand has the rewards. This has the really, really good treat. So, I'll let her get all up in it. I just have to make sure she doesn't bite my thumbs, as you can see. Now, now that she's engaged, leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. She's licking and nibbling. Leave it. Yes. So what she did, she thought that she dropped a piece on the floor and she stopped to look. I rewarded it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Yes. I don't know why she pulled away, but she did. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Yes. She pulls away just a fraction of a second. Now you'll notice I'm moving this treat away. It's because she's ignoring my reward. So I just moved it out of the way. Leave it. Leave it. Yes. Good girl. Leave it. Yes. Good girl. Leave it. Leave it. Yes. Good girl. Leave it. Yes. Oh, she's getting it. Leave it. Oh, good. Now you see she's touching it with her nose and then backing up. Now I'm a Pez machine. Leave it. Oh, good girl. Leave it. Oh. 
So you can see she's figured out the game, which also tells me she's getting, she's starting to understand the cue. Now I'm gonna jump ahead. When you start feeling like she's really getting it, then we take the prize, uh, the target, and we put it on the floor. And now I'm gonna empty my hand, putting these treats back here, you'll see why. When I'm working with the dog, I don't want treats in my hand distracting. So now I'm gonna use what we call spatial pressure. I'm gonna push her back and require distance between her and the treat. This is the beef lung. Leave it, leave it. Can you see her? Can't. Let's see. She moved out of camera, but leave it. So what I'm doing with my hand is something we call spatial pressure that I will explain in a minute. Um, let me see. I'm gonna move this back so you can see this happening. Just realize she's going off camera. Here we go, let's get on camera. Here we go, babe. Okay, here's the treat. Leave it. So the tree is right here, right where my foot is. Very nice. So she's moving off camera again. Well, there you go, you can see her. So you see how she's giving distance to the tree? This is exactly what we want. I'm using my hand right now. I can also use my body for spatial pressure. I'll show you all that. But when we use spatial pressure and back a dog up, what we are saying to the dog is that we are in charge. When she backs up of her own doing, she, let's see if I can get her on there a little more. There you go. When she backs up, she is acknowledging that I'm the one in charge. When she then gives space, distance in the world of a dog is respect. Let me get this back on. I'm having camera angle problems. So there you go, you can, now you can see her head. So she's about three feet and I'm over here. So when you say to a dog, back up, you are asserting ownership of, uh, in this case, the beef lung, um, it could be your personal space. It could be a human who's visiting. You don't want her to jump on. You can see her laying down now, right? So when we, when we say give distance, we are saying respect. Here's spatial pressure with my body. I just walk into it. Now, spatial pressure with my body. Leave it. Leave it. Back her up again. Now, here's a bigger piece, bigger piece, leave it. So what I'm doing is I'm adding excitement, more pieces, bigger pieces, leave it. I do spatial pressure by stepping toward her and I say the command. So it is the reason that she's starting to really understand the command is partly that first exercise I did where I was sitting in the chair holding the treats. But now of equal, probably more importance, is that when I put the treat down, I used my hand. You see how she's respecting and looking at me? Nice. So giant treats, precious little dog. So when I said, leave it, I explained to her what it meant by backing her up, by using my hand as spatial pressure. So when I used my hand as spatial pressure, she understood that I was taking charge. When I said to her, stay back there, and I didn't use commands, I used spatial pressure to say, stay back there. She understood what leave it meant in a hot second. So these are very high value. Here's a whole bag, leave it. I'll step toward her, leave it. So I backed her up even just two inches. Any act, leave it, of going backwards is acknowledgement on her part. So she's sniffing around trying to make me believe she's not thinking about my stuff. But she's still giving respect. Leave it. So you see, well you can't really see, leave it. You can't really see because she's off camera now, but she's walking a circle and giving space. So now leave it. As I start to pick these things up, 
I don't just release her. I pick them up, they're still mine. She can go check, but then I say, hey baby, sit. No. Piper, sit. Giving her mint figured out. Yeah, baby, good. Such a smart dog. 